Hello everybody. This session we are doing what is a secondary storage device. I want to just talk about one of the most common mistakes that people make when it comes to that word secondary. When people see the word secondary, they assume that it means that it's a backup from the original storage. So it's not the first storage device, it's the second storage device. Now that is a load of rubbish. That is not true. Do not make that mistake. So your secondary storage is your long-term storage. If you're going to describe it, if you were asked to find or explain what is meant by the term secondary storage, it'll be a two mark answer. And these are the two things that you need to say that it's long-term storage. And you could say even after the device is switched off. But then there's that other word in there, non-volatile, which is what that means. So the, the, the files are going to be there even after the device is switched off. Okay, so here's the kind of things that you can store with your secondary storage device. So general files like your, your Word documents, your PowerPoints and things like that. Uh, audio files, most common you'd probably store MP3 files. Video files like an MP4 images like a PNG or a JPEG, that kind of thing. And your programs, which is something that people often forget, will also also be stored in here. All right, so when we talk about storage, uh, they like to ask about the different types of storage. Sometimes which one's the most suitable for a situation. So these are the three main types of storage. We've got optical, we've got magnetic, and solid state. So let's have a little look at optical storage first. So if we've got some examples, so you can picture it a little bit easier. So a CD is an optical storage device, a DVD. When you're asked questions about why you would choose optical storage, you need to be able to justify why you think optical storage is better than another type of storage, or maybe worse than another type of storage, depending on whether you need to argue for or against. So to do that, we need to know about the characteristics. So let's have a look at the good characteristics of optical storage first. So it's really cheap. So if you're gonna buy a, a CD, for example, it's really cheap. So if you needed something uh, very uh, quick to put something on, and you, it's probably disposable, you're not gonna use it again. It's good that it's not gonna cost you a lot of money for that reason. Also, it's portable. There was an exam question a long time ago now, and it was talking about which storage device would be the most suitable to go on the front of a magazine. And the answer was, it was optical storage. And that was because it's portable, it's flat, and uh, it's cheap as well. So those are some of the reasons why you would choose optical storage. But let's have a look at some of the bad characteristics of optical storage. So it's got a slow write speed. And what that means is if you were going to put files on there, it does take quite a while. It's not durable. So they scratch really easy, which can be an issue. It can't be read anymore by the laser. And then it's not going to work anymore. And they have relatively low storage. Even the Blu-ray disc, which out of those three has got the most storage, it's still pretty low storage compared to other storage mediums. Next, we're going to look at magnetic storage. So let's do some examples first. So most common one is the hard drive, which is probably the one that most people have heard of. Most computers do come with a hard drive, and we'll talk about characteristics why in a moment. Um, not as common, we've got the tape drive, and definitely not as common, we've got the floppy disk. So let's have a look at the characteristics of magnetic storage. So first of all, what's good about them, buy a hard drive really cheap nowadays. It wouldn't cost you much money to have a really high amount of storage for not that much money. They're pretty durable as well. Usually people use internal hard drives, which means that they don't get moved around much, which means that they're very unlikely to break from being banged or something like that. And as previously mentioned, they've got really high storage capacities as well. So let's have a look at some of the bad characteristics of magnetic storage. So it's got a really slow write speed, it's still slow. 
it's marginally faster than optical storage write speeds, but it's still not quick enough to use it as a as an advantage. And it's not portable majority of the time. I mentioned earlier an internal hard drive. You can buy external hard drives which are plugged in via USB, but majority of hard drives are internal. I know I've talked mainly about the, the hard drive here uh, because that's the most common magnetic storage device. So when you're thinking of magnetic, try and think hard drive. It's unlikely you're going to be asked for more than one example of magnetic storage device, but just in case you are, We've got these other ones, the tape drive and the floppy disk. And finally, we've got solid state storage. So let's have a look at some examples first. So we've got USB drives. Don't fall into the trap of just saying USB. That will not get you the mark on its own. It's got to be USB drive. SD cards, like they go in, the, in a camera. Micro SD cards, if you're maybe upgrading the memory in your phone or your Nintendo Switch. And... Nice and easy to remember because it's almost exactly the same as the title, the solid state drive. So let's have a look at some of the characteristics of solid state storage. So this is going to be the, the best overall storage device that you can choose. So it's got some really good characteristics. It's portable. It's durable. So if you dropped it, it's unlikely to break. It's got very high storage capacity and it's got a really fast write speed, and that's due to having no moving parts inside, so really fast write speed. So that's probably its biggest advantage. But it does have only one bad characteristic, which is it is very expensive. It's very expensive because it's so good. Okay, so here are some questions for you to practice. I'd recommend giving them a go. Try and answer them without looking back on the video or looking back into your notes. There's plenty of questions here that you can have a little go at. I just wanted to point out that at the bottom, we've got a six mark answer, which was a previous question on an exam where you had to describe the characteristics between magnetic and solid state storage devices. And for a six marker, you had to come up with the different characteristics and why one would be better in a certain situation. So it was quite an ask really, but it would be a really good practice for your extended writing if you can give that one a go as well. That's it for this session. I'll see you soon.